In today's video, I'll be taking one of the gongs from the gong hi-hats. I'll be taking that gong and turning it into a plate reverb. So before we get into that, let's thank the sponsor of this video, Zounds. In this video, I'll be using this limited edition Ludwig Stealth Brass Snare, which you can find over at Zounds. This is the Beastly 14x8, but it also comes in a 14x6.5, plus you have the option to order either of these within a head armor case. Both of these are 10 lug drums with a matte black electro-plated brass shell. I'll be using the 14 by 8 because, well, it's a 14 by 8 and I've never played a 14 by 8. But for heads, I'll be using a Remo P77 and a Hazy Ambassador snare side. Plus, I added a set of 30 strand wires just for some extra wetness. So if you're interested in checking out either of these limited edition drums, just follow the link in the description. So first of all, what even is a plate reverb and how do they work? Well, you just start with a plate of steel. You then take a speaker or transducer and mount it to the plate so whenever you play something through it, the plate will resonate. Then you just attach some pickups to the plate in order to capture that sound and that is a plate reverb. So I thought instead of using a plate of steel, I would use a gong. So there's the plate, now we just need the reverb part of it. First, we'll need an amp and then a power supply for the amp. I'm just going to sacrifice this wall wart, which has the correct output voltage for the amp. And I'll be sure to link to the video where I learned how to do all this in the description. The audio input is just an eighth inch jack. And for the output of the amp, I'm connecting a transducer. Think of a speaker without the cone, and that's basically a transducer. This is the unit that will send the audio signal into the gong. Audio will be sent out of this headphone amp into this amp, which now that I think about it, I probably don't need the second amp, but then the audio will be transduced into the gong. Now we just need a way to send the signal from the gong back into the interface. And I'll do that by using two piezo pickups or discs or contact mics. They have a bunch of different names, but I'll sacrifice two quarter inch cables and solder the pickups onto the end. These will be spaced out on the gong using double sided tape and will be routed back into two separate inputs. So now, whenever I send a signal into the gong, it will be recorded. I'll pan those left and right, and that is the DIY gong plate reverb effect, which is honestly crazy if you ask me. So this is my voice with the gong plate reverb, and this is my voice without it. And also, you may notice that this looks a little bit different than before, so let me explain. So first of all, the transducer that I showed, that was a little bit too small to really excite the gong. It wasn't really loud enough, so I got a larger one, which is plenty loud and is perfect for this size gong. So that is attached to the gong, again, using double-sided tape, and then that is screwed onto a piece of wood, which is screwed onto a dowel, which is clamped onto a clamp, which is clamped onto a tom arm, which is clamped onto another clamp, which is clamped onto the stand of the gong, and that's how it's mounted. It's not the most elegant, but it works. Oh, and also the amp is clamped onto there because I was too lazy to extend the leads of the transducer. I also switched out the pickups to some smaller ones because the big ones seemed a bit too dark and muddy, so the smaller ones definitely seemed to help. And then occasionally I was getting some like weird interference, so I added a ground to the gong, which is going to the ground of an outlet. It's going to the ground, not the hot, not the neutral. If you don't know what you're doing, then don't mess with an outlet, but that is now grounded and that seemed to help the problem. And then probably the biggest issue with this thing is it just rang forever. The gong's too thick. So typically a plate reverb will have some sort of dampening system to dampen the plate. So mine is just a shirt draped over the gong and I actually have two mono cymbal tuners which are just magnets. I have those clamping the shirt onto the gong which adds a little bit more muffling. And like this is the only way I could get this thing to sound good. If I added more, it sounded horrible. If I added less, it just rang forever. So this is my high-tech dampening solution. 
So that covers everything about this thing. Now let's actually hear it. I'll start with just drums and I'll fade various mics in just to see how those sound. And then about halfway through, I'll fade in some other instruments and then run those through as well. So here is the DIY gong plate reverb. <laughs> 